Are you as excited about money in Excel as I am? I mean, finally, we can sync our finances into Excel and create custom dashboards that make sense for us, not just preset ones that we can't edit. In this first video, I'm going to go over the basics, like how to start a new sheet and what you get with the base Money in Excel workbook. If you already have the basics down, subscribe to my channel so you can see my future videos where I will take you guys deeper and deeper into Money in Excel. So let's get started. First, open up a new Excel sheet and navigate to the New tab here. Under the New tab, we're going to search for the Money in Excel template by going to the search bar, typing in Money, and hitting Enter. And as you can see, Money in Excel pops up. We'll click on that, and we'll click Create. Once that loads, you'll notice a few things. You'll notice this pane has been opened here. You'll notice Money in Excel up here, and you'll notice a few tabs have already been added to your workbook. I'm going to talk about this pane here. This is the brains of Money in Excel. This is where you will connect your financial institutions to Excel, and Excel will be able to download all of your transactions. So let's click Get Started to start. It's going to ask you to sign into your Microsoft 365 account. Note, you do need a Microsoft 365 account to use Money in Excel. So I'm going to sign into mine now. Once you've signed in, it's going to tell you about Plat. Plat is a service that Microsoft uses to connect to your financial institutions. That way, Microsoft will not have direct access to your login information. So we'll click Continue. Once we click continue, it's going to give us a list of banks and other financial institutions like Fidelity or American Express. And if your bank is not here, you can just search for it. I have a Bank of America, so I'm going to click on Bank of America. And I'm going to sign into my Bank of America. Once you've signed in, you're going to have to select the accounts that you'd like to merge into Excel. So I want all of my accounts to show up. So I'm going to click on all three Bank of America accounts that I have and click continue. Once that loads, you'll see your accounts that you added show up right here in this pane. But I'm not done quite yet. I still have other accounts I need to add, like my other credit card and my Fidelity account and even my student loans. So I'm going to click on add account. And it's going to ask me about Plaid again. I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to add the rest of my accounts now. Once you've added all of your accounts here, you may or may not see some transactions. If you don't see transactions yet, click on update workbook and it'll update all of your transactions. Now that we've updated and imported all of the transactions, You'll notice that all of your transactions here have been assigned a category. This is the last tab here under Categories. And if we switch over to this tab, you'll see 18 default categories. Now Microsoft says that these cannot be altered, and you shouldn't need to alter them right now. But let's say you wanted to get a little more specific on some of your transactions. For example, I like to separate my vehicle maintenance expenses versus how much gas I'm putting into my vehicle. So I'm going to add a category called gas and I'll label that as an expense and I'll switch back over to my transactions sheet and tell Excel that this Union 76 fill up for $21.97 was actually me buying gas. Now that we know how the categories work, I'm going to explain a couple more things here. Under this tab where it says For You, you'll get some interesting insights that Microsoft auto-generates. Like for me it's saying I spent way too much money at Home Depot last month. The next thing I want to show you guys is under the Settings tab. 
If you go under the settings tab, there's an option to get a summary and alert emails on your accounts that are linked to money in Excel. And you can also opt in to get some promotional emails from Microsoft if you want. So that's a neat little feature if you're interested. Now let's get to my favorite part. That's the snapshot tab. The snapshot tab gives you an overview of the information found in the transactions. First you'll notice it's set to June 2020 so it tells me this month's top spending categories, current month versus previous month. And I could click over here and change it to July, compare July to June. This is the power of money in Excel that you don't get from mint.com or anywhere else. You can create views like this as you wish. You're not just limited to what you see here. Yes, these are the defaults from Microsoft, which could be very similar to what you'll get from any other online budgeting system, but the power here is that you can create this. You can create whatever you want. You're not limited to the default that they give you. So they have a graph here, cumulative spending throughout the month. I've spent $1,700 less about this time last month. See, that's the gap between these two. Let's say that's not what I wanted. I wanted to compare this time to the end of the month of last month. I have the flexibility to create that myself, whereas in any other budgeting app, you don't have that flexibility that Excel gives you. You now have the basics of money in Excel. In my next video, I'm going to go over the ready-made templates that Microsoft has provided us. So if you found this video informational and you'd like more, please consider subscribing to my channel and like this video if you're as excited about money in Excel as I am. And finally, I want to ask you guys, what do you guys think money in Excel can do for you? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in my next video.